I don't have any control over the videos though. That's all. Although your, your book, if you go to your textbook and find the section that that type of problem is being done on, there should be a QR code that you can open that would have a video attached to it. So we got as far the last time as evaluating functions where we were plugging numbers in, right? was the last bit we did. And I did that really killer problem, you know, where it was like X plus two that we were plugging in. But ultimately what we got to was evaluating, right? Where we had a function that was G of X equals, this is just a reminder of where we were, X squared plus four X plus one, this was negative. And we had you say A was G of two or whatever it was, right? One was T, one was X plus two, but I'm not going into that crazy stuff because I don't have time for all that. But all it meant was that anywhere there was an X, we plugged in what was in here, right? And so in this case, we had one, I mean, sorry, negative two squared plus four times two plus one. And that's all that meant, right? And so I'd have two squared, which is four times the negative. So I had negative four plus eight plus one. And we just did the math like that, right? So I had nine minus four, which was five. And that's all we were really doing, right? But sometimes we couldn't solve it all out because they weren't numbers and that's okay. Um, you will have stuff like that on this homework. The other parts that you're going to have to deal with are what we call piecewise defined functions. I never know, is the E first? I think the I is first. So in piecewise functions, you're given a function, we'll call it f of x, because that's my favorite name for a function. And you're going to have something that looks kind of like this, and you'll have one or two or three equations in there, right? And this one, it would be if I have x squared plus one, when x is less than, I lost my spot, less than zero, and then, uh, x minus one when x is greater than or equal to zero. So basically, depending on what you're inputting for x, you're going to solve a different equation, right? So if I say evaluate this function f of x when x equals negative one, one, and zero. So in those three instances, we're going to evaluate the function. So if I have f of negative one, which one am I going to use? I'm going to use this one, right? Because it is less than zero, right? I'm plugging in something less than zero. So I'm going to use this function. I'm going to use x squared plus one, and I'm going to plug in negative one and square it plus one, which is going to give me one plus one, which is two, right? If I want f of one, I'm going to use this one right here, right? Because one is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to use X minus one. And what I'm going to plug in for my X is one. So one minus one equals zero. My other thing that I'm evaluating for is zero. So if I have F of zero, I am going to use X is greater than or equal to zero because it's equal to zero. So I'm going to use X minus one again. And what I'll plug in is zero minus one, which gives me negative one. Does that make some sense? 
So when you're doing a piecewise function, all you're doing is you're looking, don't pay attention to the fact that there's a ton of stuff going on. You can't see what I'm doing this too, but this whole section here, right? There's a lot going on here. Look at what you're plugging in and see which one of these equations it fits for. There'll be a set of rules off to the side. You'll have an equation and then you'll have a parameter for that equation, right? You'll have another equation and you'll have another parameter. This one says if I'm plugging in for X, something that is less than zero, I'm going to use this equation. If it's zero or anything bigger than zero, I'm going to use this equation. So the equations aren't going to be that difficult. You just have to pay attention to which one you need to solve for based on what you're plugging in. So here you've got your equation and then next to it, you'll have your rule, right? So x squared plus one, if x is less than zero, x minus one, if x is greater than or equal to zero. So depending on what they ask you to plug in, because they'll always ask you to plug something in, you're going to determine which equation that you'll use. Not too difficult, right? But it can be confusing sometimes. So, and you will have a couple of problems like that. I know because I like them. Sometimes you'll have problems that are finding value, finding values when f of x equals zero, right? What does that mean? That means whatever they give you for the function, set it equal to zero and solve for x, right? If I have f of x equals negative 2x plus 10, well, it says right here, f of x equals zero. So just set it equal to zero, right? Write it as minus 2x plus 10 equals zero, and then just solve for x, All right? Where do we go? Well, we'll start by subtracting 10 from both sides. Minus 2x equals negative 10. I don't care what 2x equals, right? I care what x equals. So I'm going to divide out that negative 2 that's being multiplied, and I'm going to wind up with x equals 5. That's it. I wish it would have made a pretty box for me, but it did not. What if I have f of x? I'm tempted to get bifocal glasses just with no prescription on the bottom so I can read my cards without going like this. x squared minus 5x. Same thing right here. This is a quadratic. You guys might remember them from last year. You might not, but you should. Now, this is pretty factorable, but if you don't know how to factor it, do the quadratic formula. If you don't know how to do the quadratic formula, give me a call. Not really a call. Like, text me or email me, and we'll go into a meet, and I'll show you. But this is a factorable problem, right? Because I have factors of 6 that add up to 5. So it would be x minus 2, x minus 3 equals 0. If you guys don't remember how to factor that, we can talk about that later. So I can set, when you think about this, this is saying that this right here, this unit right here times this unit right here equals 0, which means that if either of these equals 0, the whole thing equals 0, right? So if you multiply something by 0, you get zero. It's called the zero product property. It means if you multiply something by zero, you get zero. So if I set this up to equal zero, I get x minus two equals zero. And then I solve it. I add two, I add two, I get x equals two. Here, same thing. If I set this one up to equal zero and I solve it, I'm going to add three on this one and I get x equals three. This is a solution that will make it zero. 
right? Think about it. You can look at it. If I plug two in here, I get two minus two. That's zero. If I multiply this times that zero, the whole thing is zero. If I plug in three right here, are you even looking at the screen? Look at the screen. I'm teaching you something. If I make this a three, right? Three minus three equals zero. So when I multiply it times this, the whole thing equals zero. I'm going to have to go smack Jameson in a minute. Just call Andy. He'll do it for you. I, I am. I'm going to get somebody in here to smack you. That's the joy of having people in person. Is I, can, I can actually hit them. Only because I'm sure your mom would be all for it. My mom would hit me. Yeah, she'd be like, you can do it since I can't be there to do it for you. She'll drive to do it with me. Does that make sense with the zeros, you guys? Alina gets it. Anybody else get it? Yes, I'm liking these answers. Possibly. That's close. All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move on to the very last part. So here we had when f of x equals zero. Here we had when we're letting f of x, we're plugging in for x and we're evaluating, right? Just in piecewise. Otherwise, we were just doing it a regular one. Yeah, just watch. <laughs> the last one that we're doing is we're finding the values. Look, I changed colors just to change things up a little bit. When f of x equals g of x. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, right? But if you think about it, f of x and g of x are just names of functions. So if I have f of x equals x squared plus 1, and I have g of x equals 3x minus x squared. And I'm saying, what are the values when f of x equals g of x? Well, if f of x equals this, and g of x equals this, I can just go x squared plus 1 equals 3x minus x squared and see if we can figure out how to figure that out. All right? So we're going to combine our like terms. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add x squared to both sides so I can move that one over. And I have 2x squared plus 1 equals 3x. All right? I can move this 3x over. I'm good with that minus 3x, minus 3x, and I'm going to have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Now, I don't know if you know how to factor that or not. Um, I have a little method for doing it if it's factorable. Um, sometimes it's not, you know, but I think this one's factorable. And um, my method of doing this to try and factor something when I have something other than a one here is I multiply these two things and I rewrite it. I write this now as x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. And then I find my factors of this, which are easier, right? So this would be x minus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. And then I just have to plug the 2 back in here. I divide it out because I multiplied it in before. If it divides evenly, I just write it as x minus 1. If it doesn't, I can take this 2 and put it in front, and I'd have 2x minus 1. So that's how I factor those, equals zero. And now all I have to do is find the zeros of this. You can do the quadratic formula if you want to. 
it always works on any quadratic, but sometimes I find this a little easier and it gives me a little something to play with. So my solutions are going to be X minus one equals zero. Add one, add one, and I get X equals one. My other one is two X minus one equals zero. And I'm going to add one, add one, and I get two X equals one, divide by two, and I get X equals one half. Hopefully they won't be all that complex, right? But we can make any g of x, right? If I have a g of x, x plus 1, and an f of x, I don't know, 3x plus 2, I can just set them equal to each other, right? If f of x equals g of x, it's x plus 1 equals 3x plus 2, and we can solve it. Minus 3x, minus 3x. So I get minus 2x plus 1 equals 2. Subtract 1. Minus 2x equals 1 divided by negative 2. I know I went a little fast on that, but I also just made that problem up in my head. Right? So I can set any two things I want that equal to each other. So if it says equal, just take whatever it says that they're equal to and set them equal to each other. If it says evaluate when f of x equals zero, just make a f of x equals zero. Take whatever it's set equal to, right, and set that equal to zero. I'm not in the mood for that fight. Any questions on this? I know I went fast with the last problem, but that's because I was just making it up. I wanted you to see one that you didn't have to quadratic formula to solve. The best way to do this stuff is to play with it a little bit. I'm going to stop recording this now because we've been through the whole that whole bit. But if you have any questions, let's 